What's good, world? It's your boy, Brandon P. Yo, what's up? This is Beacon Light. Yo, what up? This is Derek Miner. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Brandon. Yo, this is George Rose. What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Miles Minnick, and you are tuned in to Oxen Brand Music. Let's glow. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, what up, what up, what up? Welcome back for another episode of Mix Mondays. What up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is DJ Integrity. Welcome to Mix Mondays, hosted and powered by Oxen Brand Music. And we're going to keep it going. Unofficially sponsored by Chick-fil-A Sweet Tea. Where all your joy is just one sip away, y'all. Just so you guys know, um, we have a, a, an amazing guest coming up. And honestly, because of him, to be honest, okay, there's there's been some other artists that I've kind of stumbled on or whatever. But then as, as I was preparing for this show, uh, I was like, okay, you know, let me go ahead and check on some more music or whatever, right? Man, I went on a bunny trail, especially as a DJ. You just go on a bunny trail after bunny trail. And uh, he, our guest, Spencer, actually ended up kind of inspiring another Spotify playlist. So let's go ahead and go through this. If you guys did not know, we do have some Spotify playlists that you guys could check out at your leisure, of course. We've got our Smooth Vibes, our Crate Diggers. Crate Diggers got a little bit of everything, right? Smooth Vibes is pretty obvious uh, for my workout people. If you're still working out in March, big salute. Good job. Uh, we got you on Oxen Strong for my Rockhead people. We got you guys covered there as well. I don't know if there's more, more new rock music coming out in the Christian space or whatever. So, uh, your boy, I, I enjoy listening to it. It's just not a community that I am tapped in with. So, if you guys know some new hot stuff, let me know. And then, of course, uh, if you were like me and you like some lo-fi stuff, we got you covered there. And the new addition is the Praise Bops. Okay, Now, um, this has got some lo-fi worship music basically all right is essentially what it is and that's what our guest uh today brings along with some other things as well uh but we going we're gonna go ahead and get right in to it so help me welcome ladies and gentlemen to the show for the first time spencer bolio what up bro Oh, man. Yo, listen. So uh, so like we were talking about off air, you know, we've been doing this since the, the pandemic. And man, you know, I always I always I was, I was door dashing right during the pandemic uh, trying to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you know what I mean? So so as I was doing it, um, I uh, essentially got to a point where I just always had Chick-fil-A right before. Right? Like I would clock out. Um, and so, yeah, man, it's something that I always kind of had and then eventually i was talking about because i do have some people at least in the local chick-fil-a's here that like give me free stuff sometimes or whatever then i was like oh cool well like maybe maybe i can get them to be you know sponsored chick-fil-a does not sponsor nobody to be honest <laughs> you know like th there there's a there's a whole there's a reason why they don't have like influencers right they, they you just you know they run a tight chip so uh so then the the joke was unofficially sponsored by and yeah man we just been um uh, we've been running that for for uh to uh whoa whoa lost you i lost there you. there we okay. go there we go um my bad y'all my bad um corazon thank you for letting me know that we uh we could not hear him my bad i uh i forgot to unmute him so thank you for telling oh, me that there we go <laughs> uh yeah um is it spotify or is there an apple music one um to be honest you're like the fifth person or whatever that's asked about apple music do you know is that something that i can like easily do like spotify just make Random playlist. I've never without... made an Apple Music playlist. Yeah. I literally, I don't know. I have to, uh -huh. I have to look that up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we are gonna check that out. Okay. Um. Oh no, it's um usernames are fun to to read. Well, appreciate you coming through. All right. So, uh, let's get right into it, man. Um, give us uh give us a little background as to who you are, bro. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So I'm Spencer. Um, I make lo-fi music hip-hop kind of a lot of everything I, I struggle to stay in one genre but um background i'm a triplet so i have a triplet oh, brother wow. a triplet sister um grew up in an incredible family really where both my yeah. counseling them and and you know just grew up with you know incredible church incredible pastor leadership all that stuff and um that's that's one reason why i'm where I am now, especially remaking old hymns and things like that, trying to to mm -hmm. bring and kind of honor the the tradition and investment of people that have gone so far before me and, and my mm. siblings and um, create music that, yeah, keeps those sounds up to date, but also yeah. um, honors really this tradition that sometimes we look at tradition and we say, oh, that's just 
um, like useless religion. Um, but really like good tradition helps with your relationship with God. You know what I mean? It provides the structure for it. So, yes, sir. um, yes. Anyways, that's, that's something that I'm very into for sure. Yeah. Ah, oh, man. I, I love that. I love, yeah. I love that you're, you're paying homage to those who've come before you who have written some, um, I would say Holy spirit filled mu- music, right. Uh, and, and yeah. lyrics and stuff. Yeah. And I mean, uh, I mean, obviously, the most one of the most popular ones is "Amazing Grace." You know, everybody like there uh, there are still people who are very far from God. That when they hear anybody sing that song, it just immediately breaks down. You know, for and, real. And I for feel real. like it's because of the anointing, you know, on that. And so I, I love that you're you are not a person who looks at tradition and it's just like, ah, oh, no, we got to switch everything up. Like we can't. We can't do nothing. It's just like, uh, that is how we get progressive Christianity. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It's true. <clears throat> just saying. Yeah, thinking that we just have everything right because it's us somehow. In yeah. 2024. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, it's 2024, and now we are the chosen ones, and we are the ones that really understand how mm-hmm. God works. And it's mm-hmm. like, mm, we are the furthest in touch <laughs> with God. Uh you know, and, and broad stroke. That's a broad stroke. Oh um, yeah, for sure, for sure. We of course. So, yeah. Um, oh, okay, Mel. Thank you, thank you, Mel, for showing up, showing out. Was good. Okay. Um. So what I what we try to do here is, and you know, feel free to be as transparent as you want. Um. So we get a chance to, yeah, we get a chance to talk about music and everything else, of course. Uh. But one of the things that um I have a, a huge passion about is um, getting to hear somebody's testimony, actually hearing your story. And so um, what I would like to do is kind of go into your origin story, uh, if you will. And so um, just kind of giving us some some background as to, you know, were you raised, you know, in a Christian home? Um, you know, the kind of the, was there a BC? And if so, um, kind of walk us through and as to how you uh, got into a point where Jesus became, you know, real to you. Yeah, yeah, for real. So I think I've always been insecure about that question in the past. Mm -hmm. And God's been growing me through it because growing up in a Christian home, there there is less of a clearly defined BC (laughs) before before Christ in my life. But when I really think about it, there there definitely is because I spent so long and maybe anyone that's grown up in that type of environment can understand some of this feeling, but spent so long second guessing everything with faith because Mm. i was so concerned that because i was raised in it Mm -hmm. that i i was aware that you know everyone starts out believing what they're raised in yep Yep. so that literally doesn't mean anything in terms of the truth Mm -hmm. what's true so i'm like how am i supposed to know as like a (laughs) (laughs) nine-year-old yeah that this is uh that this is reality so I was very skeptical. I probably prayed the sinner's prayer or something like that, like hundreds of times as a kid. I was one of those kids. <laughs> Keep going back to the altar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, like I was just very skeptical. Like I remember I was about three years old. Mm-hmm. And I know I was that age because that was the age my mom brought me to this Bible study she would go to. And mm-hmm. in the kids' uh, like daycare side of it, they would teach us Bible stories. And I still remember the the teacher looking at us, telling us to sit down, crisscross applesauce, fold our (laughs) hands. And then she'd be like, okay, now we're going to open the word of God. Um, This is not make believe. It's not a fairy tale. It's actually real. (laughs) You got to preface it and just, just so you know, kids. (laughs) Yeah. At that age, I'm like, dang, that preface is like a little sus. I mean, that was, (laughs) that was pre, uh, that was pre, you know, Gen Z humor, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so that was kind of the the attitude that I took with me through life. And I'm like, how could I really know that I'm saved? How mm-hmm. could I really know that God is real? Like, what is what is what does believing faith look like? What is true faith? Because it's one thing people would always say, well, they would tell me and try to reassure me and say, hey, well, if you've confessed with your mouth and believe in your heart that mm-hmm. Jesus was that Jesus is Lord and that he's raised from the dead, then mm-hmm. you'll be saved. And mm-hmm. I'm like, I get that. But like, define believe like i don't really know how to tell if i believe that yeah in 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 that confession um so for me it got to the point where i would be so bothered by every 
um, intellectual issue that was raised, like, you know, the problem of evil and like, how can, mm. what about all the people that, you know, don't like if, if the majority of the world um, pursues a different religion yeah. and never knows Jesus, like, how is that fair? Um, questions like that. And then even just scientific questions, like maybe the historicity of the Bible or, um, you know, whether an evolutionary completely naturalistic worldview makes more sense than a biblical worldview. Yeah. And I'd have to wrestle through all of that. And basically what happened was I got to a certain point when I was about 17, kind of into high school, mm -hmm. I was homeschooled by the way. So that was, Hey, shout out homeschool. My... we homeschool as well. Let's go. Let's go. It's cool now since 2020. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. There's it always, <laughs> it always depended on who was doing that. Right, it's so true. <laughs> like, what type of homeschooler you were? We yeah. were like the 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 like liberal progressive homeschoolers ah. compared to other homeschool. Even though like theologically we're conservative and all of that. Yep. Um, but as in we weren't like you know, no dress, no no pants for girls, and mm. uh, we, weren't, we weren't Amish life. <laughs> we weren't that type of homeschool. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Secluded from the world and everything. My parents are into psychology and all of that, so. Uh, um, oh, that's fine. Okay, yeah. Nisha, calm down now. She, she's like, she said, it, it is cool. <laughs> it is cool now. Uh, settle down now. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, I'm still, I'm still a little, I'm healing. Okay. <laughs> from the jokes in the past. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but you know, there's a stigma for a reason. Uh, so, okay. So I, <laughs> we're getting, true. we're getting sidetracked here. Uh, here's, and I enjoy it though. The, I, I squirrel moments a lot. Okay. So, um, here, here's what I want to unpack. I actually want to kind of tease yeah. out just a little bit more, uh, with what you were talking about where, so what you were talking about is that you were you were essentially being met with um, the the need to have uh, apologetics, right? Uh, to to get yeah. into apologetics, basically, and so and yeah. and that's the that I would say, and I you know I, I, my thoughts as from watching other people, you know, stepping away from faith or whatever the questioning thing. The the one thing that um, most Christians did not do really well for those who are walking currently away from the faith and all that is um, as they were discipling people and let's be let's be honest sometimes people walked away because they were never actually discipled that's problem number one mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. as they were discipling them too they themselves did not know how to communicate those tough questions and those conversations those nuances and so therefore you know they weren't able to equip you for that and so that when you got challenged with it this is what most people have when they go to college right all of a sudden they're being challenged with these things and it's like it, you you not taking the time to be able to critical think uh and, and, yeah you know for lack of better words um make somebody end up questioning it. and the number one thing that i always tell even my my boys i've got two boys 12 year old and a 10 year old and the one thing i always tell them is that hey like if you if you don't if some of the stuff that you're reading and when we're talking about God, doesn't make you go, wait a minute now. That seems like you said that seems sus. Like, then then there's a problem. That means you're not thinking. And I think I'm more mm -hmm. concerned about mm -hmm. that. And so, um, so what what was that? What was that like for you? I know you you were kind of continuing on with your story, but like, what was that like for you when you not only were just challenged with the questions? Like, did you take those questions to to your parents, to youth pastor, whatever? Like, what'd you do with that? Yeah. I mean, I did take it to parents and youth pastors, but probably more than anything, um, just taking questions online because mm. <laughs> sometimes I'd be a little embarrassed, you know, about the questions and yeah, because I think a lot of times, I don't know why this was, but it felt like sometimes in church and youth group, they would want me to say that I was a hundred percent confident that I was saved. They, Oof. and the way that would be expressed, what they'd be saying, they'd be saying like, like, is everyone here 100% confident that they are saved? And I'm like, oh, so they're, they're not saying that there isn't room for doubt. It's just like, I want to say yes. And then yeah. I, now what I'm the way I'm hearing that, even though yeah. it's not what they meant, the way I'm hearing it is don't don't say that you're like 80% there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, because you get then you then you feel weird. You know, you feel weird when everybody's like, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. And then you get to you and you're like. I mean, I was actually like 30 or 40 percent, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, bro, like it turns out um, a lot of those kids there, at, you know, in hindsight, they were not there. And they said they were um, looking back on it, looking back at it. A lot of those kids left 
um, in college and in the military and mm. all sorts of directions. And, and it turns out like I probably had more confidence <laughs> than they had. I just wow. didn't know that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. And not that it's uh, like that's a pat on the back for me or anything. It's just I just didn't know what was really going on <laughs> in in yeah. their hearts or my heart or what what the leaders wanted me to say mm -hmm. or the types of questions they wanted me to ask. So um, I'll, I did have great leadership. A lot of this is more of the way I absorbed it. Because I, I honestly think um, there's almost no way to avoid teaching someone mm -hmm. or people walking away with the wrong impression of what you said sometimes. Oh, for sure. If you know what I mean. Yeah. Oh, um, welcome to so I wouldn't put like a bunch of, <laughs> yeah. So I wouldn't put like a ton of blame on them. Although I do think we could do a better job in general in the church of like explicitly saying, Hey, like, please ask questions like this. Yes. Um, Fact. that's literally what youth leaders want to hear. Mm -hmm. Like they want to know what's really going on in your head. Um, anyway, so that was, that, that, that was where I was. And, and it didn't really change. It changed in a moment and then also over time, which is interesting. I think sometimes that's the way God works in our lives is he'll like radically transform us and leave a lot to be transformed over time as we grow to trust him. Um, so for example, when I was about 17, I finally was so tired of getting to the point where I was 95% uh, confident in a biblical worldview, as in if I'm on one side of like a canyon and here's the other side of the canyon. And on, on this side of the canyon, there's me with my questions. And then here's all the answers to my questions. Mm -hmm. A biblical worldview would get me like 90% across the canyon. Yeah. Um, whereas like, or 95%, whereas like a naturalistic worldview or um, some sort of Eastern philosophy, like I would only get five, 10% of the way there and be like, this clearly doesn't reach all the way to the end. But when you follow it out to its logical conclusions, but this extra 5% that I can't fully explain, mm -hmm. um, I would just shoot holes in every argument. Cause there's always something you could say. It like, doesn't matter yep. from an intellectual state. There's always some problem. If you're intellectually honest, you could bring up with something. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, and that's, I mean, that's a good point that, um, y even if you try to get to 100%, you'll find something. I mean, you just read the Bible long enough. Right. You read the Bible long enough and then you'd be like, oh, what was this? Oh, he slept with who? Wait, how many wives do we have? Wait, you know, right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I mean, yeah. right now I'm going through second Samuel. So anybody be like, oh, wait, David is this great guy, but he did. He did what? What happened to Uriah? <laughs> like he just offed him like that. So, mm. you know, but but the thing is, is and, and what you said was, was super, super important is um youth leaders pastors any anybody who's truly discipling somebody and, and they have a passion for it um that doesn't mean that they're perfect at it but they have the passion of like seeking out god right seeking out what is yeah. true um wrestling with those things uh the 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 jewish the uh, the jewish culture is okay with tension it's okay with the you know not yes. you, you, yes. that, that there's not going to be a black and white right and uh the american culture is not okay with that um uh, obviously and so, uh, but you, you, you hit it on the head where, so I, again, I'm a, I'm a gymnastics coach. And so like, as a coach, it, it annoys the mess out of me when nobody communicates to me that there's a problem, there's confusion, uh, there's some soreness, whatever, right. What, whatever it may be. And then I find out later on that, you know, they just up and leave the gym, you know, cause they mm. were unhappy and it's like, we didn't even talk about that. You know what I mean? Yeah, or somebody absolutely. goes, you know, goes and be like, oh, you know. so anyways, so it's like, so, you know, it's the same thing within, within church. Like, uh, like I know my pastor, like he, he may not know all of the answers right then and there, but he definitely is like, okay, cool. Let's set up a meeting. We're going to go, I'm going to take some time. I'm a, I'm going to dive in. I'm going to look up, you know, resources, whatever you do your thing. We'll come together and then let's, let's hash this out. Um, but that's what most people don't do. And, uh, Mel, Mel, uh, brought a good point. Um, uh, you know, growing up in church and all that, uh, you, you know, you might have all the, the right knowledge, right? The right answers and everything, but, uh, that you lack the faith, you know, the, the faith behind it, you know, isn't mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Um, that's crucial, you know, as well. So when you were wrestling with this stuff, did you ever feel like your, your faith was like dwindling at all when you had those questions or did it kind of help you, uh, I guess, push more into your faith? 
ultimately they led me to faith mm-hmm. but i i think my faith was never really there mm, okay. to begin with like that much i mean i don't know when i had saving faith it's an interesting thing like i don't actually know at what point that happened i just know eventually in life i started trusting i mean there was there was a moment yeah and i don't believe this was a salvation moment but it could have been when i was 17 <laughs> uh and i was like god i'm so tired of poking holes in all these arguments i was kind of like yelling in the spencer version of yelling which isn't even yelling it's probably like slightly raising my voice i'm a quiet person <laughs> <laughs> but um but but i was like god like if you want me to believe in you which clearly if you exist the way you say you do biblically then you want me to believe that you're there right and that you care about me so like yeah. you're gonna have to do it because i i've run out of my resources to like conjure up belief and faith on my own uh, if you know what it. i mean yep and uh and in that moment i remember being so like angry and defeated and then i immediately felt like um not the physical sensation but mm-hmm. like the emotional sensation of like a really warm hug Mm -hmm. yep yep where i was like just so at peace and just like warmed on the inside and just like oh my gosh i i had that moment in that moment i was almost laughing to myself i'm like this could maybe be some sort of physiological (laughs) process happening maybe but then i'm like no no that's that actually is that's a ridiculous thought actually at this point like this is so wow so real that you can't even real yeah i'm like that's that's ridiculous that's so, dope so i was like man god like now i'm gonna try trusting um that when um for example that if i see you doing something either through me or through someone else mm-hmm. i'll trust that that was you doing it mm. and see what happens mm. um and, see and when i happens. started doing that yeah it just built like over the, the next year i would help um because i was a senior in high school so i would kind of help with like bible study type of stuff in youth group and then Mm -hmm. do camp counseling and and you know end up talking with kids and they'd open up to me about their life and their situations and i'd pray with them and then they would be like really impacted and the amount of impact that was starting to happen was going way beyond coincidence like once i started trusting that it was actually god working through me Mm -hmm. then he started proving that he was actually there Mm. primarily through how he was using me that was like the first way that i really could tell um that i didn't know when i had saving faith whether it was that moment or before and i just was like so full of um questions and doubt that i was confused yeah but i just know at a certain point it was like okay this is real and like i'm being changed and um i can (laughs) i can trust now yeah um no, yeah. I love that, bro. Honestly, like, seriously, hats off to you. I, I love, I love that. I, I feel like I resonate with that because that's that's kind of my story um, mm. as well. Now, I wasn't raised in a Christian home uh, by no means. Yeah. But it was kind of that same thing of like, I could pinpoint a moment when I went to acquire the fire a youth conference back in the day, and there was there was a breaking point where I could feel my heart going soft right and then it's just Mm. like okay this i can't play around with this right i'm only been here for six months or whatever but i can tell this is real and it's getting realer you know um and then same thing with you like it's just you you walk out your faith i I think that's i think it's Mm -hmm. beautiful walking out your faith um is something that i feel like not to say that people can't have that one specific moment right that you're talking about where it's like yo like i really feel that right here right now this is that point um i i feel that that's obviously genuine uh and maybe it's because i resonate because of my story but i i feel like someone walking out their faith like that and just kind of realizing and like you said trusting hey guy i'm just going to trust that this is you i'm not going i'm not going to think this is an emotion i'm not going to think this is just my own thought uh i'm not going to just think that this is a circumstance you know i'm going to actually put my faith in Nope, that that had to been intentional. I don't know why, but I know it's intentional. I think what's so powerful about that is that I feel like that really pours, it really drops your roots even further into the faith, not only because you made that decision, but you walk it out. And then if you're walking it out, then you can mark those moments where it's like, nope, when I trusted that it was this, it really was this, and it continued to do this. And it's, I feel like it's easier for you to walk it through, um, you know, rather than, do the one moment uh 
and it be just an emotional moment, right? Because, you know, them keys be hitting just right when the pastor starts talking. <laughs> you know, they just got done with the skit, you know, that that like that really resonated with you. And then you got the people next to you boohooing, you know, it's, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and, uh, it, it, not that everybody is trying to emotionally manipulate. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And at the same time, when everyone is kind of catching that buzz, you can unwillingly still be manipulated emotionally, uh, b- because of that. So when, when it started to become real, um, as it become real, as it became real, uh, what what was the next steps for you then? Like, what what did you do after that? Did you go? Now I feel like I'm called to be a pastor, and I'm gonna go into <laughs> seminary and all that. Like, what was what was the next step after that, man? Yeah, yeah, I went to college and um, at Boise State. I was in college, and I wanted to be a uh, a physician assistant, mm-hmm. basically pre med. And okay, even in that process, bro, the next two years, three years of my life, I still dealt with a lot of doubts. Like I, I probably had like five or six crisis of faith moments my freshman year of college because once oh, again, wow. I was homeschooled yeah. and now I'm in this basically secular materialist yeah. environment. Right, right. Um, yep. Just totally immersed in that. And and God was using me. Like I, I, I grew in a lot of confidence because I could see the contrast between the hope that I had and, and the way God was working in my life versus these friends that I was around that just there was an emptiness to, mm. to their lives and their lifestyle mm-hmm. um and they could see it in me and they would ask me questions um but i still was confronted with you know diving deeper down various intellectual rabbit holes that could trip me up and so i had about uh yeah i said like five to six crisis of faith moments my my freshman year and then sophomore year there was about uh, like four of them. And then junior year, I had like two of them. And by, by crisis of faith moments, I mean, I ran, run into some problem and it genuinely like has me shaking up to where I'm like, I believe this, but I'm just shaking up. Like I don't, okay. I, I, I like trust God, but I also mm-hmm. don't really have much confidence right now because yeah, I'm just too full of questions. I love that. Um, Do you, would you mind, and again, feel free to share however much you do or don't want to do. Would you mind taking one of those crisis moments, either all four years, however, um, so that we can kind of, I guess, get more context as to what you mean by, you know, shaking up? Because I, you know, somebody could be like, oh, yeah, when somebody, when somebody questioned me about when Jesus' actual birthday was, that just took my faith. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, so, and, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, it yeah. could have been that simple, but you know, I don't know. Just if we can get yeah. some context on it, man. Well, one of them, I would say the last one that really happened, this is my junior year, was kind of a double, a double whammy in this way where there's the intellectual question of where is the evidence for the exodus of the Israelites mm. leaving Egypt? Mm-hmm. Like, if you really had 2 million people. Um, depending on some ways that people look at the Hebrew word, I believe for a thousand, then they say maybe it was 200,000 versus mm-hmm. 2 million. But mm-hmm. regardless of where you go with that, it's like, how do you not see like any evidence of 200,000 or 2 million people living in the Sinai desert for 40 years mm-hmm. and um, yeah, hanging out over there, which fascinatingly enough, just as a, as a, as a brief encouragement with that question mm-hmm. is that there was a humvee from world war ii that they found in the sinai desert under 50 feet of sand so mm-hmm. um if the, if they found a humvee under 50 feet of sand <laughs> from 100 years ago it's like i don't know how easy it'd be to find four thousand year old bones that were often even being carried by the israelites to yeah their yep. next stop because they honored the bones of their dead relatives and everything. Yep. Um, so now, That's now good. looking at it, I'm like, okay, well, actually, it's pretty reasonable that we haven't found that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's good. So okay. So uh, the again, kind of back to like, where's the proof, right? Where where's the physical yeah. evidence yeah. of that stuff? And so uh, with the with the physical evidence, I mean, I you know, uh, one of the greatest things you know, even right now is that they're still discovering things, right? There's still, yeah. uh, I mean, e- e- even for, and I can't, you know, obviously this is not going to go off the top of my head, whatever, but, uh, you know, I can't remember when they, uh, found some stuff, you know, at the ba- bottom of the, uh, Reed sea, you know, uh, where they did actually end up crossing and, 
uh, you know, where uh, the the Pharaoh's armies, you know, obviously went to come through and then uh, <laughs> the water dropped on them and then that was it. And so, so yeah, man, so that, that, but I will say I could definitely see somebody, you know, who may not know, who's not studying the archaeological, you know, studies and everything else. Yeah. Yeah. You get hit with that and it's just like, oh, which really goes to even uh, the uh, the resurrection itself. Where yes. People... Yes. That's the biggest one, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Talk, talk me through just, okay, so you, you got hit with this double whammy. Like, you know, what were you thinking? How did you process it? Who helped you? Oh, yes. Okay. And so, so it was being hit with that intellectual question and then at the same time being confronted with um see i was about what probably 21 at that point Mm -hmm. and just dealing with the same pattern of lust and sin in my life that Mm -hmm. i wasn't able to get through yeah to where i'm like okay i hit a certain point with that where i'm like maybe i should just give up (laughs) like maybe and just do what i want um because i just never i never did i never tried that my whole life um so, but I'm like, maybe, maybe I should. And I had like a difficult situation where I was like kind of confronted with the reality of the depth of, of, of my problems there. So it was that at the same time as this Exodus question. And I remember being, uh, you know how you have those like shower thoughts. Mm-hmm. Yep. I was like, <laughs> I was in the shower just processing this and I was so drained of the emotion of wrestling through these things that I was kind of like emotionless and just thinking to myself man, right now in this moment, I feel like I actually have no real reason to believe this stuff about God, like to, to trust this because it's not like, it's not working in my own life. Um, my desires don't seem to match up with it. And the external evidence in history is not pointing that direction. At least that's what I thought in the moment. (laughs) And, uh, even though it it really does, it really does. But in the moment I was swayed a little bit, we're just concerned and And so I remember this feeling of letting go of all the reasons that I had to believe to trust God, that, that, that Jesus is God and that the God of the Bible is actually the creator of this world. Mm -hmm. And, and the feeling that I had, and this was crazy, the feeling that I had, the best way I could describe it is like standing over, um, You know how sometimes in like over the Grand Canyon or like on top of the Empire States building, they'll have like those glass lookouts where you can like walk out and see under your feet. Yeah. Yep. Um, It felt like I was there where I could see this like bottomless ravine of like the emptiness and confusion of, you know, Mm -hmm. nothing being Mm -hmm. real that I've believed my whole life. Mm -hmm. But then I'm standing on this glass and this glass feels like it's five feet thick, even though there's no reason for it to be there like it like i felt so i never felt more confident than in that moment i was like dang like it almost it almost made me start laughing because i'm like yeah i almost had i almost had the physical feeling of when peter when all the all those people leave jesus because he said some really hard teachings and then he like tells peter like are you gonna leave me too and and peter's like where else would i go you have the words of life (laughs) um yeah i kind of felt like that in that moment where i'm like there's nowhere else to go though. And I don't even like, I can Mm. see it. Yeah. But this, it doesn't even feel alluring right now. (laughs) If You know what I mean? Yeah. When I really think about it. Yeah. Oh man. I love that, bro. That's, Oh, that's such a good take, man. That's beautiful. Um, that, yeah. When you just, when you get to that point and, and, you know, I, I pray that everybody at some point, you know, in their journey would hit that realization of like, where else like that like like, that's beautiful like what what else is there like is there anything else knowing knowing what you knew growing up right of the faith and what you're being told it's like even if you want to step out you hold that and be like okay this is everything i've been told right yeah look around and be like okay is there anything else that could replace this like is there like that that's essentially what you were getting you were well god is good it, like he is ultimate goodness. Like I, I started to just get more of a sense of that, seeing God transform my heart and other mm-hmm. people's lives and seeing him interact. Like he's so patient and so kind yeah, man. and so powerful that at, at a certain point, um, 
people, I think philosophers oftentimes they would conceptualize God as like the greatest good, the greatest mm -hmm. thing imaginable. Mm -hmm. And once you like interact with, with um, not just the idea of a transcendent reality that is complete goodness, mm -hmm. but you, you actually interact with that transcendent reality that is complete goodness. Mm. I'm like, okay, uh, I could go pursue like temporary pleasure or like, yeah, uh, these other things, but I, I inherently know and feel even at this point that it's, it's so empty compared to this that I'm like, even if it were wrong, which I don't even feel like it is. I'm like, once again, I'm standing on this glass that's like yeah. five feet thick. Um, I'm like, I don't even, I don't even want to do this yeah. anymore. It's just in a moment, I think we can get so bogged down and so in our heads mm -hmm. that you forget, um, really you forget like your deepest heart which is designed to long for god and mm. you 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 get stuck in your shallow desires and you, you don't realize that when you really think about it like you you long for the ultimate good yeah which is jesus <laughs> you know what i mean so yeah amen yeah. oh no that's yeah. good and, and it is that longing it is that longing that draws us mm -hmm. in right it is and, and everybody's got a different way that they go about it. And some people do have to hit this, you know, really bad rock bottom for them to feel that same thing. Uh, and then others like yourself, just into intellectually, you went through, you know, you went through that where it's just like, mm -hmm. nah, I, this is it. Like, and that's, and, 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 and it's not to say, so, so this is what we're not saying for any viewers who are watching this on the replay or whatever. What we're not saying is that now Spencer has no doubt of anything and he is, a hundred percent sure and has the answers for all of your problems. Absolutely. <laughs> that, that is, that yeah. is not what we're saying. So kind of walk that out for somebody who uh, maybe, maybe they're a believer that they're on the fence or maybe they're not a believer at whatever, uh, you know, where they're hearing you and it's like, okay, cool. It became real to you. So does that mean just like everything is sunshine and rainbows for you? Like, like talk, talk that through for somebody. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, Faith is a huge thing. And I think faith is a word that gets thrown around that we have no idea what it really means a lot of times, at least for me. Mm, that's good. Like, what is faith? Does faith mean a religion or does faith mean um, like believing without evidence in something? Yep. And so like faith, at least to my understanding, it's trust. And so you're expected. Jesus doesn't expect you to trust without evidence. I mean, he did do miracles. Mm -hmm. And Jesus also said that no, even the greatest miracle is not going to get you to complete trust by itself. Like you kind of at a certain point have to say, because you could doubt anything, you could find a reason to doubt anything. And people did, they doubted Jesus's healings yeah. and yeah. all that stuff. So to someone who's listening to this right now, I would say like what, what I would encourage you to do is to look into the questions you're asking and then realize that you're not going to get to a 100% reliable answer to the question. You'll get a lot of the way there, just like Jesus's miracles validated what he said, but you could always find some way to be skeptical of it. Yeah. Um, so ultimately what you have to do is try it, <laughs> like mm -hmm. try acting on what Jesus tells us to do, which is to trust him, to follow him, you know, read, uh, let's say like the book of John or like the sermon on the Mount or, Something like that, like Matthew 6, mm -hmm. Matthew 5, 5 through 7. Is that Sermon on the Mount? Something like that. If you look it up, it's you'll find it. Either, on the yes. <laughs> um, uh, if you start like living that way and trusting that what Jesus said and what the writers of the New Testament said, Old Testament, all of that say yeah. is true. Like try it out and see what happens <laughs> because ultimately, yeah. you know, faith without works is dead and... Mm -hmm. And, you know, if we, we can't build our faith without acting on it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So Amen. We just got to act at a certain point. Yep. No. And, and honestly, the picture that I was going through my mind while you were talking about just walking out and testing and stuff like that is, you know, mm -hmm. if, if anybody's ever, if anybody's ever built anything, built a chair, built whatever, uh, you put that mug together, desk, something like that, um, you know, you're putting it together. But you're the one that's screwing those things in. You're the one that's like, you know, hopefully reading the directions correctly or having to go back and fix it, whatever. At some point, you walked out your faith and sat in that chair or 
used that desk or got in that car after you mm. changed the oil yourself and hoping did I tighten that nut up enough did did you know did, did I pour the oil in the, it's it's funny because like we'll walk out our faith in everything else but yeah. when it comes to Jesus people are like nope I'm not walking they're like a toddler nope I'm not walking nowhere till you show me right now <laughs> like you, got, you know what I mean <laughs> and it's like okay that's fair yeah. I believe God is strong enough um and secure enough in himself that he could 100 percent be like all right bet i'm gonna go ahead and just show you because clearly there ain't no other way so boom pillar of fire right here boom manna got you right uh boom this healing uh you know uh boom you know what what whatever else whatever it was you know what, whatever yeah. else it could be yeah. and it's just like okay sometimes it is that and sometimes in our own faith that god has had to do that you know with with ourselves in some degree right uh yet the the ground may not have split open you know uh but there is something that like you were saying earlier with your story it's like no nah, but it can't it may not be this but it can't uh, but i can't say it's not god at all right um so i just feel like it's interesting that people will walk out their faith in so many other things but when it comes to jesus it's like no you have to prove to me which as arrogant as that is, God can and will do that. But yeah. if you still choose to see something and go, nope, it probably wasn't him. It was because uh, today is you know Monday and the stars align this way. And that's why, because the waves move this way. And so that's why my house didn't get hit with a raindrop. Like, I don't know. Like, people, mm-hmm. people get way out mm-hmm. there with their things. And it's like, okay, that's why I like... Um, I like uh, Frank Turek, uh, the apologist Frank yeah. Turek, where he's like, he always asks that question. He always poses like, hey, if Christianity were true, would you actually be a Christian? And so many people be like, well, you know, I don't think it's going to be true. And it's like, okay, well, then we're done with the discussion because no matter what I say, even if Jesus showed up right now, you'd be like, nah, I don't think that's what his beard would actually look like. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, that's a good question. Like, this, this, do you want to submit to something greater than yourself? That's it. Or do you do you not want to do that, no matter what? And, and that's yeah. it. And that's and it's honestly, it's it's the surrendering part, right? Mm-hmm. Like, even in your and and you know, push back if you need uh, if you if you want to, but even in your um, uncertainty and your doubt and you're walking out your faith you still were deciding I'm going to question this and walk through this because I still want to believe that this is actually true. Like, or now that I'm saying that I'm thinking about, uh, Lee Stribble, uh, the case for Christ where he went out of his way to try to prove that it was mm-hmm. not true. <laughs> and instead that man has done some amazing stuff you know for the lord i don't know it's just it, it is interesting you know with, with faith and, and and it is for the evidence of uh things that are unseen and so um you know there are going to be certain things where it's just like yo like you got to be honest with yourself and be like okay if i could figure out everything about god does god even really need to exist like if i can wrap them up yeah that's huge that that thought's really helped me like would it even make sense if the God of the Bible exists, would I be able to understand everything about him? Mm. No. So I should expect that occasionally I'll run into an intellectual problem um, that there isn't an answer to that's possible to figure out with human reasoning. Yeah. Um, and if you don't run into to occasional paradoxes like that, as long as it's not the rule, like everything's not making sense. Like there should be some level of paradox or this isn't even real. <laughs> like yeah. God's not transcendent then. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. That's so. good, man. So um, yeah. uh, just uh, wanted to be mindful of time here. So, um, uh, you know, you, you're going through your walk, uh, come to a decision where you're like, nope, this thing's real. I'm walking it out. Um, was yeah. music was music something that you did at any point during this walk as well? Or was it something that was kind of, uh, afterwards that you found this love for music? Yeah, really. Um, I, I mean, I started writing songs when I was like five on piano, just plinking around or whatever. And then yeah. got lessons, 
started my parents got my brother my triplet brother or a guitar so he'd have his like own thing he could do because mm -hmm. i had piano and then he never touched the guitar and i taught myself how to learn the guitar oh um, that's dope and then that led to singing because you can't really play guitar and not try to sing at the same time so um yeah. that's how i started singing and then that just flowed into you know very early in high school starting to lead worship so mm -hmm. i was wor leading worship all the time in the middle of all these doubts and oh wow. that was just something i did yeah because i i enjoyed it and i thought like this matters i'm sure <laughs> i think it's significant Bro, I can I say I just love yeah. your honesty even now as you're as you're talking back of just like in the past like I could because of the way you're speaking about I could literally if I would have <laughs> met you during that time you'd been like no I mean I mean I'm sure somebody is enjoying this like I'm having fun I enjoy doing this so <laughs> hopefully there's some benefit yeah. <laughs> like I could hear you doing that That's, I appreciate the honesty yeah. seriously no for real that's how it was and so the way I got into to music from a professional standpoint was, um, you know, in college, I, I, I finished my degree because that was the responsible thing to do. Mm. But the whole time in college, the only thing I really was passionate about was um, help leading worship at my church, helping the youth group at my church and um, helping this campus ministry that we were running at Boise State. So when I graduated, um, my church just had the budget for an internship for a year where I, I got to be paid to be in like the pastoral meetings and be more invested. Like I led the youth group for a year mm -hmm. and, um, was still leading worship and everything got to the end of that. And then none of us had the sense that God was calling me to full-time ministry, not because things didn't go well. We just yeah. like, didn't get the sense that that was what was happening. Um, I so that. I was like, I was like, okay, God, like I, I'm not applying to PA schools. I've already spent a year after college doing something else. Mm -hmm. The only thing I haven't tried is music. Just stop me if you don't want me to do music. Just stop me. Mm. Um, because that was the prayer. best. I didn't I didn't get the the direction. So I'm like, I'm gonna move and just be like sensitive to you stopping me. And I feel like that's something maybe that that uh could be helpful for other people, even if you don't know where to go, just do something out of obedience with the sensitivity, the prayerfulness for God to redirect you. That way you're still taking steps of faith and not waiting around for, you know, something that, that God might want to show you through your experiences rather than just sitting there. <laughs> so. Bro. Um, well said. Well said. Yeah. Yeah. So what happened was I, I had a friend. So this was how I knew that it was God in this situation. Yeah. Um, I had a friend in college that was friends with uh, the DJ. Um, it's a uh, wait, DJ standout. Yeah. So that's um, at least was, I don't know if he still is, but Derek Miner's DJ and he was on tour with Derek yeah. Miner and no big yeah, deal. Yeah, yeah. And those guys and Curtis Hoppy was on tour with them. So they were coming through Boise and then my friend got us lunch with them because they were, they were friends. So yeah. we got lunch. I really wanted to sit next to no big deal. Cause like I knew who that was and I'm like, I want to talk to no big deal. Yeah. Um, and then like, I can show him like my music that I'm just barely starting to work on. Um, but instead I sit next to Curtis who I had heard briefly, mm. but I didn't know that he had just moved to Boise, Idaho. Mm. And I didn't know much about him or his story or anything. And yeah. we just hit it off and talked for like two hours, but nothing came of that. And then a few months later, Another friend that would do these local beatmaker producer meetups in Boise, mm -hmm. also a believer, um, invited me to his event. And Curtis found out about that through a producer named Wantel, who's produced for like Dream Junkies with like John Gibbs and Russell yeah. and those people. Yeah. Um, and uh, anyway, so Curtis shows up there and he's recognized me and it was like, hey, man, like, do you need help recording or anything? Because, <laughs> you know, I could. I'm trying to uh, actually use the studio space and I also want to help people. Um, and I'm like, that's incredible. I've been low key trying to make connections for a long time. So yeah, basically started working with Curtis and then, you know, immediately he was like, you know, there's these skills you need to learn for sure, but the actual songwriting ability and kind of pure, pure like creativity, mm -hmm. he was immediately like, you you can do this like you're you're i want to write songs with you if you know what i mean that's dope yeah so i was like oh okay um i thought that was probably true like i i thought i was 
good at this, but yeah, you know, there's always that self doubt. Like, would it, yep. would people who are like full time artists see you as someone who could be a full time artist? Yeah, and and so he was able to really encourage me with that, and and uh, yeah, and since then that's how I met uh, um, him, and then artists like Derek Ryan that you had on here um, before, and yeah, uh, just been building with with those guys for the last few years those um really fundamental relationships of making music that's that's growing out of growing out of our actual character rather than just trying to build a career if you yeah. know what i mean that's dope man so so how many years have you actually been really pursuing music yeah i say three years since i put wow. out my first song probably on that was professionally engineered and everything yep. yeah yeah, yeah. That's dope, bro. Uh, that's dope. Yes, yeah. We know a little bit about standout. Uh, and yeah, Curtis, Curtis, and standout are definitely some great, uh, great people for sure. Um, we've had, yeah, we've had Curtis on here, uh, as well too. So, um, so I, I guess this is a good segue then. Uh, let's do Oxen Brand Spotlight uh portion where we get a chance to hear from the artist about uh their song and your song specifically, uh, is Send Me um with the the, the lo-fi vibes and all that kind of talk us through yeah. um talk us through uh just the the heart behind the song um the writing with it uh and just kind of yeah just what what the lord kind of conveyed in you as you were creating the song yeah for real no that one was was crazy because i've been trying to dig through instrumentals that have a lo-fi sound but could still be a hype track at a show where you could go crazy yep because send yep. me has this like ridiculous drop in the hook um, but oh, it starts yeah. out with these like really stripped back, <laughs> stripped back lo-fi vibes. And so I'm like, I want to make a song to this. Like I'm, I'm, I'm playing with melodies and everything. And this was one of those moments where like just the words came out of my mouth with zero planning to the point where like, I would say, I'm careful about saying God told me this <laughs> if I don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. But I do, I really believe that God was significantly influencing, uh, this situation because i wasn't i wasn't thinking about anything related to global missions or missionaries or sharing the gospel and i just start singing like how beautiful how beautiful are the feet of those um and just like you know the feet of those that bring the good news mm -hmm. um to the lost and everything and and it just came out so naturally to yeah. where literally literally in the moment because I'll, I'll be recording with my phone like a little like audio note flowing yeah. on there Yep, yep. And like the first time I'm recording, I get like two lines in and then I'm like catching feelings. I'm like all emotional. I'm like, oh, <laughs> like, I'm like, this is so good. I really mean this. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I pretty much immediately was like, this is this needs to I need to finish this song because, you know, there aren't a lot of songs about like inspiring people to go out and um, share their faith, really, when it comes to. I guess in in hip hop there actually is a lot of that. Yeah. I would say there's a lot in hip hop, but outside of that, I feel like there's yeah. less anthems, especially like international missions. If you know what I mean? Which yeah. the song doesn't specifically say that, but the whole music video I made were like inspired with footage from right. Mission Aviation Fellowship and um, all of that. You know, people that are literally training their entire lives to take the gospel somewhere where it's never been before yeah like that's that's a type of commitment that's just unbelievable yeah yeah, yeah shout Someone... out to missionaries shout out to missionaries because they that's a you are intentionally um injecting yourself into a whole different culture you know yeah um yeah you know now uh for especially for for the young bucks out there who are like yeah i just want to I want to travel this, you know, the world and just tell everybody to be Jesus. And it's like, if, homie, you ain't telling your neighbors about Jesus. You ain't going to tell nobody else. Like, please sit your behind down. That's and, facts. That's facts. And, and get trained up. Yeah. Now, you know, if you mm -hmm. got, you know, if you got that person who is very loud mouth and they're always bringing up Jesus one way or the other, um, not in a weird, cringy way, of course, but um, yeah. then it's like, okay, I can kind of see that on you, right? Yeah, there's... I've seen some people, especially coming out of high school and stuff like that, where it's just like, "Yeah, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna take over the world for Jesus," and I'm like, mm -hmm. "I don't know if anybody knows that you're a Christian here, except for me, because I see you." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, that's real. That's yeah, real. no, I love that, man. I love that, and yeah, uh, you definitely got a dope drop for sure uh, in the track, and uh, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna go ahead and play a little bit of it, um, a little snippet here, so that we can uh, we can hear it, um, and 
one of the things that really drew me to you when I can't even it was one of the bunny trails that I was on, I think the first time um I heard some other lo fi music. I don't know if it was Jordan May or somebody like I can't I can't remember uh-huh. how, right? But it was it was one of those things, algorithms, right, pops up or whatever. Um and that's how I stumbled onto you. Is I, I forgot how I specifically stumbled huh. into you, but wow. I know it was during that time that I was searching for it. And uh and immediately I was like, Yep, we gonna follow and yep, we're gonna have to somehow connect with them because um they're like you said, CHH has a lot in terms of that. And so what's what's uh I guess odd I would say for you know someone like you who does the low five stuff and all that, it's like there is no kind of like the Christian R and B right now that's like trying to get that push and movement. They're trying to like yes. make their own noise and get their own placement because right now anything that's not ccm right anything that's not this like poppy track or whatever it's true is all thrown into chh Uh (laughs) uh-huh and it's just Uh like well that's not it but i'm glad that we're at least supporting it but we can't compare we can't compare spencer to no big deal like right right that'd be unnecessary for somebody to be like oh yeah listen to chh okay cool who you listen to oh you know no big deal spencer and and then you get that person's like wait a minute that's who am I listening to? Like, what am I listening to? You know, so, so I love that uh, there are several of you guys who are starting to really pave a way, and um, and then again during the bunny trail, trying to come up with the Spotify playlist and stuff. That I was like, oh wow, there are a lot of you. <laughs> there <laughs> are, are. <laughs> there's a lot. I really think that's delicious. I think that's so dope. Yeah. 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 All right. Cool. Let's go ahead and uh and run the track a little bit, and uh we'll we'll close it up so uh if you guys are here live make sure you guys let us know what you guys think of the song here live how beautiful how beautiful are the feet of those the feet of those who bring the good news to the lonely the lost and hurting oh who will tell them that and i don't know oh i don't know how i could Keep it close, keep my mouth from singing the good news, yeah, it's what I'm made for, so make a way, Lord, my feet will walk it out, and how else will they know if they haven't heard, and how else will they hear if nobody speaks, and how else will they speak if they never sends out, now, I just wanna go where you a drop That was that was uh that that was dope. That's that's uh I gotta make sure I put you uh back in here. See, uh yeah, yeah, was was not expecting that drop the first time. Yeah, I know, right? I know, right? Yeah, that's uh there we go. Okay. Um Thank you guys for bearing with me. I found out some technology issues were going on and so I gotta do this back and forth. But uh, down to earth. Yeah, uh, yeah. But well, here's the thing, though. Like, not only not only is it like a super dope drop, but like the thing that I, uh, the the part that I enjoy is there's so much texture to the song. That's that's really what it is um, for me. So as as a dancer, um, that you could, I think part of the reason why sometimes I get really really bored with um, CHH, you know, a, a mm-hmm. lot of Christian hip hop or whatever, or I guess hip hop in general. Um, is that it literally it to me it sounds copy and paste and yes you might have a sound here and there or whatever but like 
you're the same. And then especially and then as a DJ, because I'm I'm mixing mm. songs, I'm literally going from a song to a song. And guess what? So many of these songs are so easy to mix into because I'm like, oh no, y'all might as well just all been in the same studio and <laughs> just record at the same time because this is mm-hmm. this is whatever, right? So, but like again, you know, that song, the 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 textures, like you talked about at the beginning being stripped back, then you got the drop, but but then then the uh I, I, you can correct me, but like the lack of better terms of um, the uh, I guess like the double time that you that yeah. you did, yeah, yeah, like I wasn't expecting that after the drop. I immediately thought like, oh, okay, he's gonna get like really airy and sweet and sound or whatever, and I'm like, oh no, this man just sped up all of a sudden. Was not expecting that, and then it mellowed back out, and it's just like, oh yeah, I could I could rock with this song for sure. So is that intentional? Oh, like, do you, you like? Oh yeah, for real. That was always my thing. I remember this. This is gonna make me sound so uh, white and like a youth group kid, but like Andy Minio was my introduction into hip hop. Yeah. Oh yeah, for <laughs> but, sure. Yeah. But something I loved about him is like, for one, he was kind of leading people out of that era of uh, just flowing off of an instrumental that is like unchanging from kind of the nineties up the whole time. Yeah. And you tend to keep the same flow pattern for an entire song. Um, something I loved about him was how much variety he would do. And I always thought to myself, I'm like, man, I bet I could make music where it just kept people guessing all the time and held their attention, especially as our attention spans shrink with <laughs> short form content. Yeah. Being able to like switch up what's going on in the song every like, you know, 15 seconds or so. Yeah. Um, I think it's, it's huge. So like definitely on purpose and, and I love hip hop. Like that's kind of how, well, it's not really where I started with music, but I was so passionate about it for so long Yeah. that, you know, I, I, I love, I love to rap. Um, I'm a little more home singing, but yep. you know, carrying all those influences into what, into what I do is, is, I mean, that's what I enjoy. Yeah. 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 And, and I think it shows too. I think again, that's, just just in that song alone. Now, uh, obviously, I've checked out some some of your other songs as well, or in other songs that you're um, uh, featured in as well. And it's, it, but it shows like it shows that you do have this hip hop bend. And and I think because uh, even even with the lo fi vibes or whatever, I I did stumble on some artists or maybe some similar songs back to back where I was like, okay, this is kind of this is all starting to sound the same too or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. But I can mm-hmm. tell. I can tell that you've got some influence and I can tell that you're being intentional about switching things up and that it, it fits naturally for you. It doesn't feel like, okay, now I'm going to do this and I'm, you know, going to force as many words as I can, you know, in this four <laughs> bars, but yeah, yet I'm singing yeah. and I normally could only get like a couple words in, in all four bars. So, so yeah, I, I think it's dope, man. I think what you do um, is honestly, it's amazing, bro. Um, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to see where the Lord takes this. And, and that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, um, you know, that it's like, oh yeah, you know, jam fest is going to, uh, uh, jam fest, winter fest, winter jam. uh, is, uh, yeah. Winter jam. Uh, sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'm all, yeah, <laughs> we'll get there. I'm in, I'm in the competition season. So that's jam fest is a cheer competition. <laughs> I coach gymnastics, but my whole gym is comp- competing, but anyways, but yeah, like winter jam, you know, is, is going to hit you up all of a sudden and tell me back and like, it'd be great. It'd be great. Of course. I, I actually, for sure, for sure. I would be excited for you. Um, if that opportunity would come and I think it's going to be amazing how many people do get impacted specifically you know, by your obedience, you know, like when you were talking about earlier, where it's just like, yo, just, just walk it out. I just wanted to be obedient mm-hmm. just kind of mm-hmm. let the Lord use me wherever I was. And at, and at the time, you know, that I was, and I think you have, you posturing your heart like that, I think is where God is going to be able to do a whole lot more with what that more might be is up to him. But, but just knowing that that's your heart, knowing your obedience is there, knowing that you're like, I'm, just gonna keep moving left foot right foot left foot right foot and if that doesn't work then i'm gonna go right foot left foot right foot left foot and see <laughs> yeah you know see it. where the lord takes you so i'm i'm uh, i'm excited for you bro seriously i i'm it, it's great to to hear your story a little bit more too as well thank you that's encouraging for real for yeah. real yeah for sure yeah. um so uh wrapping up what are uh, what are some things that you are working on for the rest of 2024 um are there any artists that you're specifically trying to to hit up and start working with like what was what's coming up man yeah yeah i would say 
uh, two things. One, I'm just embracing more of the musical creativity that I've always said I'm going to lean into and haven't. So I'm working on a folk song right now. Oh, wow. I'm just recording all the guitar for, and I love it. It's honestly one of my favorite songs I've made. Um, made an Afrobeat song with Derek and Derek Ryan recently. And, and so I'm very hyped about that song. I never thought I'd belong on an Afrobeat, but like, honestly, it's probably the best my voice has ever sounded <laughs> on that song. Dang. Um, legitimately. Um, but, uh, all of that being said, I'm doing a lot more with, with Derek Ryan and Curtis Hoppy. We have our collective called upside down kingdoms an artist collective. And, you know, we're going to be rolling out more with that, especially, by about summer we'll be doing a lot more in that direction and um just building just trying to to network and and, and just create ministry events yeah. and content and like windows into the work god's doing in our lives that we couldn't share without people seeing us in the context of our actual lives yeah like yeah like Derek curtis and i we're all close brothers where we, we confess into each other we mm. worship together amen we eat together we play dumb games together <laughs> all of that <laughs> um, yeah so it's like we want if, if if the goal of this is not just like a feeling you get in an altar call but it's true following of jesus and true discipleship we yeah. want to give people a window into what that looks like in our lives through our music and through the platforms that we're able to grow so sure. that's kind of the vision of what to look for and um at least for me what i'm what i'm most excited about in the next few months here that's dope man yeah that's dope man i i love it uh i love the creativity i love that you are trying to go all different genres and just kind of tap in and and explore and i mean that's as a creative that's what it is and 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 i get it so many people are like oh yeah but then you got to eventually stick it to one lane and you got to do it. and it's just like hey for some people yes they see mm. some flourishing when they when they settle their behinds down sit down and camp and one thing um and then there's others who are like nah i just enjoy doing everything and you know whatever hits hits but i'm gonna keep exploring and i and i, I think that's dope I, I think what i'm actually even more excited about that you were wrapping up with is uh is uh the fellowship the community that you're in uh it's yes there are artists who have some community but sometimes that community mm -hmm. is based more around music than it is about jesus and mm -hmm. uh and, and mm -hmm. I, I think it's really really dope to to hear that you guys are also being very intentional about your time uh, with Jesus together as a collective as well. So that's dope, man. Yeah. Yeah. For real. For real. Yeah. Man. That's thank you so much for having me like this, seeing the way this podcast has grown too, and the, the, the visuals and um, I know you had some technical difficulties there, but like the, the complete package, I feel like so often, um, you know, people, I can tell that, that you really care about hmm. the, the, the big picture of, of what it looks like to have online content and to do it in a way that's helpful for people to digest and actually absorb the information that's being said. Yeah. With like whether it's the, the, the thumbnails or the, the, um, why am I forgetting the term for links, the, uh, timestamps. Yeah. Things yep. like that. Yeah. Just so fire seeing that because I mean, I feel like that's what we're missing the most really in the Christian music world is people that really take the, the networking side of it seriously mm. um the platforms that like you kind of had rapzilla and that was it mm. and mm -hmm. and now uh for alternative christian hip-hop media and, and now there's this opportunity for all these people to grow but yeah um so few i think are, are really moving with excellence in it so it's really cool to see like all the growth that's happening over here you know what i mean yeah wow hey i appreciate that man seriously uh very humbling to hear that. So thank you. I uh, appreciate those kind words, man. And uh, yeah, man, we're just, we're going to keep, just like you, we're just going to keep walking it out. And, you know, uh, many times that I thought about wanting to stop, then, you know, it's cool to have a team, uh, especially uh, uh, Corazon is the nickname of Nishizzles uh, or Nisha. Uh, who who you were in contact with about okay. booking and everything okay. else. And so uh, her, honestly, her faithfulness to this, is one of the main reasons why we haven't stopped, and I think I think uh, that goes that goes a long way. That if you know, not, we talk about accountability partners and stuff and all that, um, and mm -hmm. that's true. Um, and sometimes other people's faithfulness to just show up and keep doing something and keep being a part of something makes you go, you know what? I better take this seriously because they're they're giving of their time, they're doing things in in on such a faithful 
com, you know uh, basis that I would be wrong in in stewarding their time incorrectly by not wanting to take this seriously you know as well so uh so very humbling to to hear that and uh encouraging as well you know for for us to continue to do that so uh of course we'll be pushing out your stuff man we're gonna we're gonna stay tapped in and see what you guys got going on what you got going on uh and uh we'll, we'll definitely have to come back on here and and uh and hear more about your story uh i, I know there's a whole lot more and, and uh you know i just man I, i'm excited I'm excited when somebody is just walking out their faith. I mean, I think that's probably the biggest thing that I, I took away from tonight is just walk, walk out your mm -hmm. faith, keep walking, yeah. allow the Lord to show you, but just keep moving. I love that, man. Yeah. I love that. Well, Hey, appreciate your time, man. Uh, seriously. And, uh, we'll, we'll definitely stay in touch, bro. For real. Appreciate you guys too. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right, man. Until next time. Peace. All right. Later. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much for for sticking around. It was, um, you know, uh, I I enjoy having conversations, you know, regardless. Um, but uh, just to hear somebody who just they seem very genuine in their faith, uh, and I think that's probably one of the coolest things, um, honestly, is having having people that when you get a chance. I think that's one of the things I really loved about doing the podcast is that I'm like, oh. They're not just about the music. Not that I assume everybody's about the music, but it's like, oh, there's a lot more to them. Oh, they have a lot more desires than just music as well. Or, um, oh, it, it's it's they're not so consumed with the music that they're doing and pushing it that they don't take time to enjoy walking out the conversation about their testimony. And I think that's probably one of the biggest things uh, that I see in this uh, space with with working with different artists and all that as a DJ and stuff is just sometimes some people just would really rather just camp on music stuff and i get it there there's definitely a time and space for that but i think i just care far more about the person's story than i do their their music so i think that's dope so um shout out to mel uh for sticking around and hanging out uh go to Sone, of course thank you so much for everything that you do here as well um shout out to anybody who's uh lurking in the back uh if you are on youtube and you have no idea what that is that's that was a twitch um terminology i don't necessarily know if people still use that <laughs> or use that anywhere else but um seriously thank you guys I, i'm gonna go ahead and pray us out if you guys have any prayer requests here live if you want to drop in the chat i will uh be sure to pray us out uh, uh any kind of prayer as well um hey what up uh always always lurking um, that's the funny part too about doing stuff like this is, uh, you really don't ever know. And I purposely don't have, um, the, the stuff on the screen that tells me how many viewers are here or whatever. Um, I've, I've forgotten all about that stuff. Cause I'm like, you know what? I've been so fixated on that stuff for so long that I'm like, nah, I'm just gonna go ahead and do this and we'll just see how this goes. So, um, but yeah, if you guys have any prayer requests, we'll go ahead and, uh, and I'll, I'll pray over those. Uh, if not, I'm going to have a general praying us out uh so uh lord first and foremost thank you so much for today and uh just the life of breath uh that we have no matter of our situations are going great uh or not um the fact that we are here uh father means that there is still more fight to be done and more trusting uh to be done as well and so uh we pray right now for all those who are dealing with any kind of physical um uh illness or uh hurt or pain um, or any kind of suffering, Father, that you uh, would bring healing and comfort to that. Uh, rather, it's using wisdom of going to the doctor, uh, uh, finding the correct doctor, finding a, 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 a person who actually um, not only takes takes care of them, but, uh, but is knowledgeable uh, enough to not just look at them as a dollar sign. Uh, Lord, I pray for those who have been uh, dealing with any kind of loss of any sort, uh, uh, rather it's a, a friend, family, um, or, uh, or just a loved one that uh, that they they know from afar, Father. Uh, we pray that you would bring uh, comfort to them. Uh, there are um, a lot of situations that I know about, and so uh, you know about them uh, far better than I do, Father. And so uh, I pray right now that you'd be with that. Uh, Lord, I pray uh, specifically for uh, the young girl, Elise, uh, who uh, is a freshman in, in high school, and she um, had a, a seizure 
uh, attack last night and and uh, seizures aren't normally normal for her and it's just kind of a you know all the details father uh that's going on so i pray not only that um just mentally uh and physically all the the stuff is is healing and recovering and she's uh doing well uh but i also um pray uh just for any kind of demonic holds uh that are on her life as well um again you know the situations even more than what was conveyed to me father and so uh we pray whatever strongholds on uh that are that are holding elise uh, or, or anybody who's listening to this, uh, that right now uh, those chains would be broken, that, that you would give them strength uh, to uh, to actually rely on you, strength to rely on you, Father, um, and not wanting to give up on whatever the fight is. Uh, and even for those who are dealing on the outside of those who have um, dealing with any kind of stronghold, uh, may you give them the strength to continue to lean on you uh, so that they can continue to uh, pray for uh, them and, and love on them and serve them uh, in all those uh, capacities as well. So um, we just uh, pray that you would uh, continue to lift up AC. Um, uh, Father, you know the situation's going on as he's in the hospital. Uh, may you not only um, work that out in his body, Father, but even in his mind um, as he is just having to be wrapped around with this, you know, reality of, you know, one day he was fine and, and, and the next day he wasn't father. And just the frustration that can kind of come in on that, um, the ups and downs and tests and trials and all that father. And so, uh, we just pray for again, full healing on his body that you would, um, really, uh, bring comfort to, to not only him, but all those who, uh, love and, and support him, uh, as well. And, uh, that you would again, guide the doctors, uh, the nurses, all those who are looking at his stats and everything else, uh, may you give them wisdom that far surpasses even their own studies, uh, Father, that is something that is just uniquely dropped into them um, because of you, Father. And so uh, we just pray that you be with them in that whole situation. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Um, thank you guys so much for hanging out and uh Make sure that you guys again that you guys check out uh, the Spotify playlist again. the The newest addition is uh, the Praise Bops. Uh, by the way, Corazon, that would be Explanation Point um, P B. Yes, P B. Uh, that just drops the link. If you guys are on Twitch, you'll see that. I don't know why I can't get this stuff on YouTube at all. It's supposed to work both ways. It doesn't, and that's just a whole different problem that I just ain't got time to, to struggle with that. So, uh, Hey, thank you guys so much again for sticking around, hanging out. And, uh, till next time I will see y'all grace and peace. Adios. Hey, if you liked any of this content and you found some value in it, make sure that you like subscribe and of course share it. Also, if you're interested in some more, go ahead and check out these videos till next time. Grace and peace. Adios. Adios.